Excuse me, do you have the time? Why well, yes, let me just check it on my new Lexus model wristwatch. Today we're going to be looking at this Lexus clock. It's actually out of a Lexus uh, vehicle. Uh, problem is sometimes it doesn't work. The old wiggle wiggle on the plug apparently had an effect, but let's crack it open and find out what's going on. Uh, looks like um, some clips on the side should get it mm, apart. At least split it in half. And let's do it. Oh, we have some buttons in the front. Maybe they're going to want to fall out. There's one on each corner, so let's do it that way and maybe they won't fall out. There you go, you can see the button there. We'll leave it that way. Bit of a PCB in the background. Um, and does that pop out of there? There we go. Rather interesting looking setup. Well, I think this one's going to need to go under the microscope. It's all surface mount. Um, we'll have a nice close look at the pins of the connector there. Um, I wonder how easy it is to remove the clock face if we have to. Those hands probably just push on, but then we don't know. We have to find a way of finding out what time it is, unless it's neutral. I mean, you could perhaps you could put them on any position and then set just set the time with the buttons, and it will just maintain a constant. Uh, cycle from there so it probably doesn't matter what way the hands go on really there's a little chip under there I'll just give a slight tug on the on the needle there just to see if it does come off easily and I'm pulling with a reasonable amount of force and she's fairly well stuck on there so we will leave them for now and see if we can see what's going on hopefully it's all just on the back side there maybe we can sneak into those pins through the top well, having a nosy at this. What do we got as far as dry joints goes? Oh yeah, there could be something going on with that left pin there actually. So there's definitely some cracking going on around that left pin there. You can see around here there's some cracking and it's looking very sort of dull and frosted the solder joints which is uh, usually what happens in solder joints with a lot of uh, exposure to varying temperatures such as those that sit on the dashboard and right in the sun and on the back side actually it looks quite shiny but I'm pretty sure it is lifting away there's a definite um, there's a definite ring around here you can see where um, I reckon it's broken away let's see if we can prove that with a little bit of flexing I can see that moving slightly so that's definitely our issue I think and we've got the joints for the motor itself so we'll we'll resolder those as well and I reckon just those joints will be the ticket. Let's run down the line with our half broken solder tip, which actually works all right still. But uh, I never used these little baby cartridge tips before, and I pressed a little too hard one time, and it didn't like that. <laughs> the end came off funny enough get a bit more heat into it that wasn't too good big old nasty blob probably should have done it with that sort of an angle to help it flow through to the other side a bit more but that looks like it has anyway just letting the heat stay on it for a bit Cool, alright, well let's do the motor on connections. You can see how the wire from the motor, little fine wires there, they come down and are wound around the the legs of of the motor. 
Um, if you're ever working around those, you want to be careful not to break them, of course. Not unrepairable, but if you do break it, it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> Sometimes you can get things like that where the wire has broken as part of its normal operation just through vibration or what have you. Um, but you don't want to make hard work for yourself. Let's buzz around the top side and give those things a touch up. Might as well give it half a chance to last another that many years. Now we know that pretty much all automotive systems are 12 volt. There is a slim chance, I guess, that maybe for whatever reason it's not. And we're drawing zero current. And I don't believe it's rotating at all. So we'll bring it up to... No, it's still drawing no current, but it's sitting there happily. So all it does is, after a minute, it ticks forward one. See if I can wait a minute, and then you can see that tick forward. Watch the white gear. You'll see it move. There you go. So that's working. So, yeah, very low power consumption. It only, only lights up when it needs to, and moves when it needs to. Maybe it needs the accessory on in order to set the time. Just going to push these buttons and see if it... Uh, has any effect. Oh, there we go. So if I hold down the right button it skips forward. If I hold down the left button it skips back. Well, that's a pretty quick way of doing it isn't it? It only draws 30 milliamps and if I hold it down it goes faster. How about that? So if you, you push it and it starts off slowly and one, two, three, four, five Oh good, at least you can skip by a minute. And like everything original, people want stupid money. Toyota will only supply brand new units at a few hundred dollars. All for the sake of a simple solder up. Well, thanks for watching. If you got one of these with intermittent or no operation, now you know something to try, it'll probably get it working again for you. Just be careful if you haven't done this before and you got a big solder iron tip not to go melting anything with your squeeze in there. Catch you next time!